Hello. Hey. Hello. Hey. 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 Hi. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. I think we're live, which is great. I'm, I'm always like so curious, like, hey, are we live? Or are we not live? It's very hard to tell. Um, but I, I think everything's working. And um, yeah, today is, before we go in, like the, the, today is August 8th, 2018. It's uh, 2.30 p.m. in beautiful Berlin. It's like 35 degrees out today. And I'm literally melting, uh, which is fantastic because, you know, um, we like heat. <laughs> no, it's terrible. My computer is overheating. So if things seem a little bit shaky or slow or we get tons of overheating warnings today. That's why um what's new yeah i think it's been like three weeks since i last done one of these um but i'm i'm happy to be doing one of these again um changed my camera setup that's that's probably the first thing so there's uh plants behind me now the cat tree is over there uh i changed the angle of this thing to be well can i show this it's, it's now like this 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 is the new setup but with a cat and cat tree and 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 little plantsies behind me little succulents they used to be like just on the on the thing over there but now they're just whoa okay okay i messed this one up <laughs> uh yeah that's good enough good enough for now all right uh no is it no it's not we're gonna get this straight we're gonna get this right but uh anyway <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. okay okay Okay, that's better. That's that's the way we want things. Nice. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, <laughs> what are we going to do today? So I was thinking there. There's a few things I I really need to do. Um, in news, I recently joined the uh, uh, Rust Net working group, uh, part of the web stuff, which mostly means like. Uh, trying to get HTTP services to be like nice. Um, so that's a thing. Um, for that, we're like trying to figure out a bit of governance, trying to figure out, okay, what are some like goals for like the next, um, I guess it's August now, uh, four months, pretty much on the on the dot. Um, so a few things we came up with was like, hey, we should put out a survey and we should get some people to, um, build some example apps so we can like figure out which things are good, which things are not so good. We also want to build like a tutorial framework kind of thing uh, that doesn't do too much, but you know, just shows up some basics and explain how um, some things work. Also, hey, skip note. <laughs> and thank you. That's a very kind thing to say. I'm, I'm happy you're here with us uh, today. Uh, yeah, so as, as part of like, you know, joining that, I've been, I've been doing like writing documents, which makes me feel very, you know, it's not my comfort zone, but you know, we help out with that. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, but yeah, the, 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 the one thing I've been working on is, oh, I guess this is a uh, closed tab. It's this PR, um, to get hyper to be a little bit easier to use um, in combination with uh, command line parsers. So the, 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 um, we have, I want I, okay, okay. I got an idea for, for first things. I, I wanna show off uh, the clap flags repo that I made uh, because it combines all the ideas I've been working on for command line parsing since Paris. Uh, Paris was RustFest, which is about like, two three months ago ish um and we we had a question of like how how can we like make reusable uh command line parsers um because as, as you probably know if you're writing command line application like uh let's look at some code here whoopsies so let's do ls dash dash help right there's a help command here ls dash dash version and gives you back a version like clear like even like git dash dash version has something right and uh git dash dash help and just out outputs like a whole bunch of like help stuff command stuff and that, that's pretty simple 
it will document some um, options, some arguments, some flags. People will do this differently. Um, and then in addition to all this stuff, you also want to have the parsing side of it. Now for the, the parsing stuff, um, uh, there's this very common crate named CLAP, uh, which stands for Command Line Argument Parser. Uh, and it allows you to use this builder pattern to be like, okay, cool. Our version is 1.0. The author is author here. Here's an argument which takes all of these values. And here's another argument. You know, it's just this giant chain of stuff. Now, uh, it's pretty all right. But um, you know what's even better? Uh, uh, Crates.docs.rs slash struct dot. So clap is currently at version two, version three is coming out and there's a new crate gonna be paired with this called clap derive underscore clap underscore derive, which basically uh, merges struct opt into like the clap ecosystem directly. So what this allows you to do is you uh, define a struct um, and all the flags that can be put in there. And then all you do is like generate one of these colon colon from args aka from environment var from uh, command line args and then it will output um, just a struct for you and if parsing fails then this will um, be like nope nope this failed uh, we're gonna exit in this manner so that, that's pretty nice um, but you know uh, if you're looking at this you're like okay cool uh, so what, what this gives you uh, as a default it gives you um, the dash dash help flag and the dash dash version flag uh, and nothing else. And all the things you put in there are like parsed and you get colored output and all the other things you can enable. But but the, 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 the main thing that it's missing is like, what if we're building an HTTP service and we always, um, and we want to make it listen on the port. Uh, say you're building uh, 10 services or smaller apps or trying just some stuff out, writing all that stuff from scratch all the time um it's not nice it's not great so um for that we made clap port flag clap port flag uh which allows you to um require it right so you say x and uh, clap port flag and then you call struct.flatten and then you say port port and then you can create a tcp listener from like an instance of args so args.port dot bind and gives you back a tcp listener instance where um, it's part of like the net from core and now a cool thing of this is uh, this is a very standard interface it's like a uh, what a tcp listener bind tcp listener here it comes if you look at this probably tapes over some internal stuff yeah i don't know i never read this code but uh, oh, I guess that's the internal stuff. So it's just um, has some internal methods. But the, the, the main idea here is that this is the standard for everything in Rust, including async IO. Uh, you always create this one socket first. And then on top of that, um, you get to implement all the abstractions you would want. So, you know, all the streams and whatever, async streams, async listeners, async handlers, all the async await stuff also works on top of this. Um, but so bringing it back to um, this PR, uh, what this allows you to do is um, the uh, hyper, well, HTTP library can then take uh, hyper or like eh, words, 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 can take uh, an instance of this thing and just build it in a one liner, which is really nice. Um, okay. I want to show you this slash clap flags. Here we go. So in, as an example, um, I made this crate called clap flags, which exposes uh, a bunch of those reusable flags. Uh, not only did we create the port one, we also created like logger, verbosity, permission. Um, it's kind of nice. Uh, hey, Dan, <laughs> nice of you to join. Um, so the, the idea here again is like you say args, CLI from args, and then we get the port one, we get the log level, uh, we initialize a logger, um, you know, 
and then uh, we drop our permissions, which is really cool. So that's like a security thing where you would start with um, a high amount of permissions initially. Uh, once you're like done setting up and you've done all the things that you need permissions for, you can then drop them and be like, cool, I'm now going into lockdown mode where I'm not allowed to, for example, create new files, where I'm not allowed to do some other stuff. Um, which is, um, I, I think that this is reasonable. It's not the most elegant approach because it requires you to do like sort of um, global rural stuff on your system before you can drop into it. Whereas the BSD pledge is a lot nicer. Um, all right, so this allows you to be like, cool, um, here's the only APIs we're allowed to access in our application, uh, which I, I think is a really cool thing because it, it means that if someone can somehow hijack your process, say you're running a process inside of a container and someone manages to find, uh, manages to find a way to do like remote code execution, um, then within that process, they're, for example, not allowed to spawn a, a shell task or whatever, right? Which, which would uh, lock it down. So th this is probably like the more fine-grained, nicer version. Um, there's another version of this in Linux, uh, which is less nice. I think this is really a really good API. I uh, forgot what, what it's called. Um, but yeah, in uh, so the uh, clap permission flag just drops your permissions to a different user, uh, which I like. Um, and then here's the boilerplate that I'm trying to remove with that one PR. So here we take, uh, we get the current um, Tokyo instance on the current thread. Then we say, uh, create TCP listener on this current uh, instance from this socket, TCP listener that we created up there. Then we have a Tokyo listener. And then uh, we initialize a server builder uh, from, again, that listener. Um, and once all that is done, you can see the Tokyo run line uh, which takes that server, the um, futures chain of the server, and starts executing it. So until that point, nothing's being executed. Everything's just uh, being chained together, being like, okay, if this happens, this happens. If this happens, this happens. At the end of it, you say, okay, now go. Now run. Now start doing stuff. Um, yeah, so the, the idea is that we can um, remove, with that PR, uh, let server equals server from TCP listener, it would become just this. So we can drop two lines, which which I think is kind of nice. Um, yeah, so if, if we run this, uh, let's remove this line just for fun. <laughs> Cargo run dash dash example main dash dash help. No. Uh, future stream is not implemented for thing, 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 thing. Okay, that's not good. Uh, what happened there? Listener. Oh, <laughs> yeah, there we go. We needed, we were shadowing some variables. Okay, th this should work. So now this runs, it says compiling flag, and then it gives us a help output. So as you can see here, um, this verbosity logger port permission in turn uh, has generated all this code. So we get a help version, we get a pretty version, which uh, allows us to switch between uh, normal logging and pretty printer logging. Um, we have a way to print version information. We have a way to pass it more. So if we're not gonna do that, the, for example, this would give us log level debug, I believe. And this is like log level, uh, what is it, trace? Anyway, it's generally all what we need. And it says, okay, cool. We need pass a port and says, okay, cool. Now I'm listening on port 8080. If we undo pretty, right, it does some pretty printing. Now the one change I wanna make is I wanna change this to be uh, ndjson based, ndjson log, which is a new spec some friends are working on. ndjson is pretty common already. Um, and you know, like this would be whatever it is right now. That's fine, that's fine, nice enough. Whee. Okay, 
Anyway, I'm, I'm really happy about this because if, if you look at this code, um, what we have here, this thing is completely reusable in every single app you ever make. It's like one import to get this in there. Uh, two if you can't struct opt also. And then, you know, setting these things up is reasonably intuitive. Like we can remove some stuff that we don't want to be using. Now if we do this and we run this again, then this will fail. We'll be like, you need to be root to run this. And I, I don't believe there's a way to run uh, an app from root. I kind of wish it would like just take the um, current privileges. Actually, let's try and debug that. Uh, Proof drop slash priv drop. So priv drop, priv drop error. And it says function drop, uh, apply source, starting, yeah, UID check. I don't know why this is the case. Um, self UID check, there we go. Do ID change, unsafe, libsy, set groups, one. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> there's, there's some stuff in here. I don't know why it, it really wants you to be a uh, root. I don't get it, but that's fine. Um, yeah, we should probably fork that and then change it, maybe. But yeah, ho hopefully it makes sense what uh, we've been doing with the command line working group. At least now we, we get to have like reusable flags. Um, probably need to do one for TCP. So we can get a good TCP story there. Um, ideally using the Rust TLS package, uh, which seems to be good. I don't know if it's good. Like my, my um, something I would love to see here is um, if we could do something, oh. so um, TLS and uh, TLS, and then this would uh, bounce between um, either uh, what's it called? Let's encrypt or like some local cert, right? And using that, you would like get a good good thing. So like a version to have like um, for local development where you just use like random self-signed or let's encrypt, which gives you like a let's encrypt token certificate, whatever. Um, I, I, I think that would be like really nice. Uh, okay, what else is in here? Yeah, so the, this thing works and it works fast. Um, like, uh, this is one of the fastest HTTP servers on the planet right now, <laughs> which I think is really cool. There's only like, um, I believe 12 unsafe calls in all of the code base, uh, which is pretty good. Like they're trying to reduce all of them out, which is nice. So it's completely in, it's almost completely in safe rust. Uh, and it kind of blows everything out of the water in terms of performance. They're probably gonna keep that one up. But then the, the the thing I'm like really stoked about is that this code here, um, especially after we remove those lines, um, will be like some, it's just pretty readable code. Like and, and mo mo most people have like a reasonable sense of, I think programs, like if you've written servers before, you can read this and be like, oh, sort of get what's going on. What's that question mark? And you get to hear, oh, that's error handling. And you're like, okay, I think I get most of it. And I, I think that's nice. I'm, I'm happy with that. Uh, cargo run. Does this still work? Error. Uh, yeah, we added two uh, random flags. I guess this is actually good. All right. Um, you use error in macro or whatever. Um, all right, so we had some other stuff. Finalize hyper, show up new modules. 
done. Open to issue issues about governance. That's a job I need to do. Finalize hyper. Um, I think we can either do this or we can do that. Let's see who's in chat. Hey, everyone. There's like heaps of people in here. It's amazing. <laughs> really cool. Um, don't be shy. Say hi. Happy to help answer any questions people have also. Hope all this stuff makes sense. <laughs> Just most of the time I'm like really excited about things. Whoop. Whoops. What is up here? What is up here? All right, so I'm not gonna port this thing today. I'm not gonna finish this either, because that's pretty good. Just short of this, just short of this and this. Um, yeah, this is a PR I opened before, which I'm fairly excited about. So let's finish this PR. Uh, okay. Okay, our CPU is spinning. Um, HTOP, what's going on here? So OBS is taking up a core and a half, at least. No, oh, oh my God, OBS is taking up so much like RAM. Um, okay. PM stat. Let's see. What's the stat? Yeah. Anyway, um, let's go into hyper. All right, so we have some feedback here. So I was like, hello, here's a PR. Like first I opened up like an issue about this because we're trying to be like good citizens being like, hey, here's like some stuff I think might be useful. And then, you know, people were like, well, here's how you do that thing. I was like, oh my God, that's fantastic. And then I was like, well, it's probably not perfect. It's not ideal, I think. So um, here I was like, what if we had a version where we could just call server listen with uh, a port on it? And Sean was like, yeah, that sounds reasonable, but I'd probably name it something different, but that's pretty good. And I was like, okay, cool. Let's write this PR like two days ago, uh, which I think is useful. Yep, 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 yep. So I wrote the PR, got some feedback. Well, I asked some questions about like, hey, how do I do like X and Y and this other thing? And I got just feedback of like, yep, here's how you do those things. And then got some more feedback. Um, right, and now they're like, actually, since this should change to converting to adder incoming, that's the main thing. Uh, we have a thing where we're calling Tokyo TCP incoming and they're asking us to change it to adder incoming. Um, and then someone else was like, they wrote hyper TLS hack. Implementation of adder incoming that supports TLS using Tokyo TLS as a from standard listener, standard listener, TCP standard listener method. Um, okay. Um, so I think this is pretty interesting. Uh, Tokyo TLS. Let's see what this is, by the way. Because this might just be native TLS. Okay. So no Rust TLS. Uh, ok, ok, ok. <laughs> One of my cats is being really cute right now. She had a little pause up. And she like started rolling around like the little cutie she is. Felt like sharing that. <laughs> All right, so um, there is some stuff going on here which I don't entirely understand and that is fine. Because I think we can mostly ignore this. Appreciate the work they've done, but if I don't understand it, then we might just, you know, skip that. Uh, Maybe it'll come in useful later, but I'm going to adhere to this uh, first. All right. Changes are to add a pub super fun from TCP to adder incoming. Okay. 
The name function can be split such that after getting a standard listener, it just calls uh, adder incoming from TCP internally. And then this function also can just call adder from TCP listener. Okay, um, cool. So we're going to have to hack around a little bit. Um, right now I'm patching uh, an object named server inside of Hyper. Um, and they're asking us to remove most of the code from there and move it into uh, an object or struct named uh, adder incoming, or as they say here, adder in come on. <laughs> Sorry, that's pretty terrible. Um, actually, are we still streaming? We are still streaming, we're still live. Yay. Um, let me also open this. We've been going for 25 minutes. Um, all right. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I could, can help myself not to make that. Um, uh, pretty terrible joke. It's, uh, it's not good. It's uh, pretty awful. Uh, all right. <laughs> pyong, 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 pyong. All right, uh, what are we doing? So we have um, this patch here, use standard format. Um, okay. Let's sums this one up. Whew, other incoming. So it's a server TCP, TCP, adder incoming. Okay, local adder, set keep alive, set node delay, some other stuff also. Is connection error format adder stream? Okay, so we probably need to do pub super, pub super, uh, from TCP, it returns an instance of self, uh, con con result adder incoming. There we go. Um, new function can be split such that after getting the standard listener, it just calls our incoming from TCP internally. All right. Uh, that's fair. All right. And the question then becomes is how do we do this? All right. So they're setting up a TCP listener here. Listener, local error, adder. All right. So let's say... Uh, we do this from a listener. What's the arguments here? Um, standard TCP listener. All right. FT standard TCP listener and result self. Is listener dot local adder dot map error, so that's how we get the adder. Sleep on error is true. TCP keep alive, TCP no delay, timeout none. All right, so then we can copy most of this. I think. Adder, adder, listener, listener. Cargo check. All right. <laughs> Um, I don't know if y'all like caught, caught that, but that was a little cat. Um, having a little uh, cat dream, making little cat sounds in that cat dream. I just melt, melt with my cats. <laughs> They're so cute. Um, but I, 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 I feel talk about it. Um, a lot about my cats. <laughs> 
All right, all right. Oh, wait, hold on. There, there. Tokyo TCP listener. Oh, wait, uh, hold on. <laughs> TCP listener coming down from standard. Dub map error. There we go. Ch -ch -ch -ch. Uh, let listener equals standard listener handle. All right, so we need a handle, handle and option handle. Uh, if let some handle uh, if let none handle TCP listener can combined. How does this work? Well, oh, so it needs a handle also. Is this how we do this? Oh, um, let's make this a non-option handle. There we go. Um, let's see what's a bug there. Cargo check. Checking the cargos. Method is never used from TCP. Okay. Uh, mod. So then we go here and we say from TCP. There we go. And it says oh, bind, try bind. And we um, and, uh, probably delete that code. And then we do it there. And then we say listener net TCP listener, uh, standard TCP listener, builder Tokyo TCP incoming. Um, adder incoming like that and then um all right let's try open this let's try doing this so we give it a handle we give it a listener um All right, um, we have a listener right there. The incoming equals adder incoming from TCP. Uh, listener handle. Um, and then we have that error there and then we have the incoming now. Uh, and then we do server builder incoming, uh, self builder incoming, right. and then that should be wrapped in. Okay, I think it should work. I don't know. Oh wait. Uh, cargo check. Unexpected token. Expected reference found in Tokyo Reactor. So we need to borrow there, which is good. Unexpected token, config feature, runtime. All right, all right, all right. So we stripped a bunch of code and now this thing's broken. Um, probably means we need to remove that code, add it back there, remove this and check back there and then now let's check again and good. this should work use tokyo tcp like 70 okay now that's gone again cargo check 
CPU 100%. Server, server. All right, so this works. Um, listener, TCP listener from standard, standard listener. Error, error, new listen. Yeah, that's fine. Um, let adder map error, 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 new listen. That's also fine. Uh, actually, let's. Uh, one more. Okay. Okay. I like that. Um, Okay, so th this seems to be working, which I'm happy about. Standard net TCP listener. What do we call it? Standard TCP listener. TCP listener. Mod TCP standard net. Socket adder. Uh, as standard TCP listener. Okay, and we're back there. <sighs> so this seems to compile. Now the question will be if we can get this to also run from standard net TCP listener. All right, um, which I think we should be able to. Um, self conco builder incoming, adder incoming from TCP listener uh, and handle try bind. So a cool thing here is that with adder incoming, we can also get the local adder out of it, um, which will make me really, really happy because it actually solves a bug I was running into. Uh, and then we do that and we force push it up because they're checking our commit messages and can't be bothered to write better commit messages. <laughs> better being, um, they, they use the Angular standard or something. where they link your commit messages. I don't know, it's not for me. Um, all right, so we have the clap flags repo. Uh, do I still have that weird code I wrote earlier? Yeah, whatever. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right, uh, Tommel, future struct opt hyper get equals github.com slash my name slash um, stuff. Uh, I feel like I've got like tiny burps. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, GitHub.com slash my name slash hyper branch equals uh, from TCP from TCP cargo build dash as example main. All right. Let's see if this builds. Compiling hyper. Um, 92740B, that's the right commit. So it actually is pulling down the right thing. Okay, fantastic. So it actually builds it. So that's cool. So there, there's no problem there. Server from TCP listener dot incoming. Um, and then we can just do is do it from listener from TCP and then question mark after it and then we're handling errors there and then um, 
I think what we want to do there is we want to server listening on listener local adder is server dot local adder, uh, which will not give us a question back because it's actually already listening. And then that's that. Uh, cargo build example main. Let's build again. Info server dot local adder server hyper not found in scope. Okay, let's revert that part. Whatever. Cargo build. So this should build, I think. Cargo run dash those example name Bob. All right, so this seems to work. Um, let's remove that code. Uh, let's run this again. Um, Y'all. Uh, looks like all of this works. This is uh, something to be pretty excited about, I think. All right, so now we've uh, reduced our code to actually work with from TCP. Um, unfortunately, the adder incoming method does not work somehow for some reason. I don't know why. Um, maybe because the builder doesn't complete or something. I don't know. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, I think we can like go back in here and be like, uh, okay, cool. I just um, move the methods around. Mod TCP. Oh, fuck. Uh, this is not what I wanted. All right, so runtime mod TCP. We need to fix all those. <laughs> fuck. Full stream. All right, all right. Configure runtime on. Uh, uh, like that, like that. Use Tokyo Reactor. Configure feature runtime. Use self colon colon TCP colon colon adder incoming. As few changes as possible. <laughs> All right, let's go back in here. Let's push this. Let's see the diff again. Mm, that's an actual addition. Config feature. Oh, so it was a space after uh, use time duration. All right, uh, space after that. There was a space after standard net. Space after that. Um, yeah, that's the only change we made there, and that's fine. We force push again. Stream come to Paul. Ah, right, fine, fine, fine. Package temperature above threshold. Your CPU is overheating. Uh, you don't say. <laughs> My computer is just like wheezing and whizzing and being very hot. Oh my God, it's so nice. Uh, but maybe I should point it at my laptop so it cools down. Yeah, it's actually kind of nice. All right, um, so we look at this patch again. Hopefully the diff is now absolute minimum. <laughs> I think it is. Yeah, I, th I think that's pretty good. Like, no one will hopefully complain about that. This seems reasonable. This also seems reasonable, I think. Um, here's like a minimal amount of changes. It's mostly consistent with the other uh, things. So config feature, runtime, use Tokyo Reactor. Yeah, I think that's also fine. 
I think this is mostly fine. I'm just gonna say, hey, update patch again. Uh, show monster. Hey, update patch again. Uh, add Sean monster. Updated uh, patch again with your feedback. Hope this is good. Sparkles done. So that's that's our grand feature. <laughs> Remove two lines of boilerplate for every single HTTP server, hopefully ever written in Rust. Um, <laughs> sorta, sorta, sorta. So my 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 grand plan here is that um, this will work for um, uh, HTTP frameworks. That they will be like, hey, you know what we should do? We should be able to accept a TCP socket from standard. And the moment everyone does that, um, it becomes a a very nice flow where you know command line parsers they initialize a tcp socket and then frameworks have a way to consume a tcp socket and that that's one layer of interaction the other one is to see an import and address and that kind of stuff um but but with those things in place um i i really hope um you know that that building good services will become really easy uh, which, which, yeah, I'm, I'm just really excited about. <laughs> huh, okay. Uh, yep, this is done. Done. Cool, that's two. That's, that's number two. Yay. Oh, I'm just so happy about this. So from TCP... Now, um, probably like the last bit that will be a thing is um, being able to get uh, TLS in there. I, I would freaking love to have like a way to have standard TLS. Um, let's just quickly do a search on some stuff. Also, I, sorry if I'm not asking like a lot of questions if anyone has like any questions or wants to share how their weekend was, <laughs> please jump in. I'm just really going like, oh, I've got ideas today and I have focus. So I'm just, I'm just kind of like just typing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, so as I call it, let's encrypt and then we say rest and then we hopefully find something. I don't like that people are like yet another, as if there is so much software and the status quo is so incredibly good. Cause it's not, <laughs> um, needs to be better. Uh, March 7th, okay. 132 commits, two issues. Uh, it's not too bad. I don't know how complicated this is, but it might just be good. Use your own keys in CSR. Library, API overview. You can read the entire API documentation on docs.rs. Directory, colon, colon, let's encrypt. Account, registration, register. All right, it seems not trivial. Um, all right, so there's a whole client library. Um, no, 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 no. Docs.rs, I, I just went to Docs.rs. All right, so they, they have a complete uh, thing here. I bet they're using struct opt also, or at least clap from the looks of the output here. Also, prints help information, prints version information. That sounds like classic. So, set ACMA directory URL, domain, tube sign certificate. You can use more than one domain name. Blah, the, blah, the, blah, the. Um, so, I, I believe the main thing here. All right, so the, the way I'm understanding this, um, all right, if we were to design a TLS flag thing, then there's two parts to it. There's the part that consumes the TLS stuff, um, and there's a part uh, to point to certificates. Um, 
I have a feeling that defaulting to this stuff might be good, but it needs some configuration. E.g. it would Directory to save ACMA simple HTTP challenge. This option is required unless dash dash DNS is being used. Dash dash DNS. Where's the D for DNS? Flags. Use DNS challenge instead of HTTP. This option requires use to generate a TXT record for domain. Damn it. All right. So there's two versions for this. Domain. Domain name to obtain certificate. You can use more than one domain name. All right, all right, all right. That's that's reasonable. Dash D dash underscore domain. Public data directory to save ACMA simple HTTP channels. This option is required unless yada 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 yada. User key, load private key, using account registration. This is optional. Okay. Uh, CSR load domain certificate signing request. Domain key. It just sounds like there's so much stuff here. I wonder if there's a way to like create a config for this, where you're just like, here's my configuration, which is a bit of a cop out, to be honest. I should ask people like, what's the most common flow for like, let's encrypt? Yeah, I'm like in over my head. I, I understand all these words, but I don't know what people tend to use. Um, so I, I don't know what the right approach is here. So my, my, my personal feeling is, uh, just by looking at this, is there should be a way to differentiate between DNS and uh, the TXD stuff in code. So when you use it, perhaps. But then I know you need to pass the domain and then there's like a whole bunch of other stuff here. I'm so so about all these things. ACMA client signed, signed the certificate. So this is for signing certificates. What I just wanna have is like a, a sort of add-on that just says, well, here magically now you give me a domain name and you will have TLS solved. Um, but there, there, there's definitely a bunch of moving parts that I'm like not seeing. So we should probably bench this. Um, this is a really good one to try out. I shall pin this for a later inspection. All right, I'm really happy that this works. Um, we should probably create like a, I'll probably create a TLS flag thing for this eventually, I think. <laughs> All right, uh, what else? Patch hypercourt C methods. Uh, I'm gonna refill my water bottle and then we're gonna do like half an hour of hypercore patching. And then that's that. Then that's, that's, that's the stream. Um, all right, <laughs> hang right in there. I'll be right back. So the, the, bi the biggest thing I'm afraid of is that OBS crashes because it has in the past and there's no guarantee it won't again. <laughs> and that's all fine, but you know, it would suck if it would crash again. <laughs> huh, all right. Um. Yeah, I'm thinking maybe maybe at some point, someday, I'll just like, you know, do one of these Twitch streams where I just grab either like a paper and we all read along or we start investigating like a bunch of commands together. Just a little bit of learning. Um, might be good. 
I'm kind of liking today's stream because I'm showing off some of the stuff that I've been doing earlier um, in the last couple of weeks, I guess, and just patching some random stuff and like giving a bit of updates. Um, when I'm like working on um, hypercore stuff, it's like a lot of like, oh, let me think. I'm just like quiet, which isn't great, I guess. <laughs> um, but okay, all right. So let's let's patch some hypercore, 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 hypercore. Not those issues. We don't read those issues. <gasps> read key pair from disk. Add len method. Oh yeah. Oh wait. Actually, I should reply to this. I've checked it for a while. Uh, do you already know where you want to? Uh, all right, so these are excellent questions, and I'm going to pin them and reply to them later. Uh, no, we're going to stay on this page. Uh, close. Close. Uh, wait, what? Four domains in domain.iter. Account authorization. Oh, that's pretty sweet. You know what? I, I really want to play around with this and get, like, you know, just to self-sign some TLS stuff, just get it working. So the personal thing I, okay, fuck it. We're not gonna patch Hypercore quite yet. Or, you know, the store, there, there's some stuff I need to do, but I'm, I, I wanna talk about this thing just for a bit. Um, so um, I'm thinking like, if we're gonna build services, uh, hmm. All right, all right, all right, all right. I here here here's maybe like a slightly controversial opinion. Um, at its core, a lot of backend development is quite repetitive, and I I think we can find really good abstractions for it. Um, extra abstractions that don't quite exist that people have tried to like approximate. Um, but uh, I feel like Rust can give us some better things, mainly because it has macros. It's a pretty high level language, uh, has like the attribute stuff. Uh, and you know, it's, it, it, it's pretty robust and the ecosystem small enough that we can like actually create standards. But I feel, I, I just feel like there, um, there are certain things in terms of like backend development that we can achieve and then more or less be done with it. Um, so, um, all right. I, I, I recently noticed that while I'm like all about small modules, I think in terms of deployments, I'm like not so much into micro micro services in the sense of where people are like, we must split everything into smaller parts because you know it requires a lot of infrastructure and I'm just usually one person or part of a small team or like um, uh, consulting for for a company or whatever. And uh, um, the, the, the things we work on, you know, if, if uh, I'm trying to make sense of this story. What we're trying to get at is uh, doing microservices, like very small services, uh, too small of a services. It doesn't work because it relies more on infrastructure and I'm not really, it's, that's, that's not my place of comfort. What, what I'm comfortable with is composing things together and composing them into like bigger and bigger things and then eventually you have like a big thing. Um, so in an ideal scenario, uh, what we could have is like, you know, um, damn it, I'm not making sense here. All right, let, let me try it from a different angle. I think there are um, a few very, <clears throat> hmm. Hmm. All right, all right. New new approach. When you deploy a node um, application um, to any server, right? Um, the most commonly recommended thing is that you only ever deploy node behind Nginx. So you have your Nginx uh, layer before your node layer, and perhaps like depending on the size of your um, uh, deployment you would have like a Amazon load balancer in front of that. You will always want to have like a, um, 
a static IP, like pinned by your uh, provider. Um, huh. Something stuck at um, So what, what happens there is um, it means that for any good, like realistic, proper node deployment, you will also need knowledge about Nginx. And configuring Nginx might seem, you know, like, oh yeah, we'll just learn Nginx. That's a skill you can have forever. Um, the answer is uh, Nginx has a lot of legacy. And um, well, it's a really good part, piece of software. Um, if you have only node people or, or, you know, only people that do a particular language on board, then suddenly that becomes a separate skill. And usually like a sysadmin kind of thing is being asked for that. Um, you know, uh, it, it kind of makes this thing like, here's an expert thing. Um, it it, it kind of, it's annoying. So personally, I find it annoying that in order to get a node deployment going well, uh, we have a hard dependency on, on Nginx, which is a very different skill. You configure it very differently. If you want to script it for quote unquote performance, then what it requires you to do is you need to learn Lua, you need to learn how the Lua package manager works. Uh, um, creating reusable packages is a whole different story. I never got that one to work. Uh, I got them to download, never to upload. Um, so uh, writing my abstractions was a no-go. Um, and I don't know, I, I just, oh, the thing's called Lua Rocks. I don't know. I, I, I just struggled with that. And, you know, it, it becomes this very own skill. And, and what I would want, like in an ideal world, you could write everything back to front uh, in the language you're most comfortable with, uh, without it being like, well, in order to do a good HTTP deployment, you require this one thing. Um, so I, I think Rust has an interesting um, position here where we can ask the question is like, okay, what if we were to not use Nginx? Um, what does Nginx give us? And on the second part of that is how can we write, create like look at those abstractions and integrate them into the thing we're building. Um, so I, I started at the very top being like, okay, cool. If we're gonna write like command line applications like services, uh, we will need flags. We will probably want man pages we will probably want autocomplete right and th those things are now sort of getting there uh, with the clap 3 release we'll have all of these things uh, working hopefully smoothly like a single builder s file with like four lines to generate autocomplete and man pages um, that one struct that I showed earlier um, to you know create reusable flags and options and positional arguments all the other stuff um, right so the the the, the hope there is that you know we can create reusable parts of that and that's cool so then then we take a step further um what does nginx otherwise give us well it gives us tls termination all right then the question becomes how can we create convenient tls termination uh what what is a what sort of the state of the art uh what are the requirements we have and how can we converge that so uh from where i'm standing is I am not a GitHub incorporated US, right? So I will not want these fancy TLS things, SSL things. If people want them, they should go for it. Enterprises can do that. But mo most people, they just want SSL. They just want to, you know, give a base level of security uh, with a cost that's not too expensive. Uh, so Let's Encrypt provides free SSL, free like, you know, uh, certificates. And um, yeah, that's that's good enough for most people, <laughs> which is which is nice. Um, so my 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 stance there is okay um, for production deployments. Uh, if we're talking TLS termination, it should have a way to. We should have a convenient way in Rust, where from the command line, your command application, your service can do TLS termination. That means getting back a TLS certificate and like you know. Uh, putting it into your HTTP server and removing as much boilerplate at every single step of the way. Um, probably the other big thing that um, uh, Nginx gives you is uh, load balancing on the one hand. Uh, so that means round robining between clients and having a feedback way. Um, like a friend of mine showed me a cool line which can do it like statistically determine uh, based on reply times, which endpoint to send back to, which I, I thought was kind of neat. 
Uh, but there, there, there's a whole field to like dive in there. Um, but if you're building a monolith, it doesn't matter because it would be like the same application. So whatever for now. Um, the, the second part is um, doing compression in a very convenient way. I think there's a big win to be had there. If you can do on-the-fly compression for every single incoming and out or for every single uh, outgoing request, um, all the assets, all the things, look at the headers, compress them nicely, then that's a big win. And especially if you can make that very convenient. Um, then there's probably like some other stuff like um, image optimizations. Uh, there's the mod page speed or something right there We're with a whole layer of optimizations. Um, there's a whole bunch of routing in Nginx to forward things through backend services. I don't know. And that, that should probably cover most of it. Like if, if we can get like most of these things to be convenient, then it's it's good enough. I don't care too much about the forwarding. I care mostly about, um, maybe I do care about the forwarding. Fuck it. <laughs> we should have a good story there. But then, you know, like um, suddenly there there's a native, there's a library version, a library alternative to these other ways, standalone deployment. Um, with hopefully as good of documentation, as standardized as Nginx is itself. Um, I'm not saying I want to remove Nginx from the equation. I, I, with different requirements than other companies, would want to have a convenient way where I can build, where I can shape these services uh, using one language or like build a convenient monolith um, from smaller pieces. Um, right, so that's Nginx on one side. Um, Second part I'm really interested about in is how, how can we like have a good story for embedded databases? Um, usually there's like a network database. It speaks a network protocol and you can like send it commands and it gives data back. It does other stuff. But what, what if we had like a good story there, like a simple key value story where we can put data into um, and have a way to back it up and like some other stuff, right? That's another thing. Like, cool. That we'll, we'll, what about removing database from the equation and like having this thing? Um, some form of configuration management, uh, credential management. Uh, we should probably think about that somewhere. Uh, we need encryption standalone. Um, if we're going to talk about services, about standalone services, I think there's like three, conceptually three to four things in my brain where I'm like, okay, I think these are things we should tackle. Um, like th th these are all personal. This is like in no means like I, I want to mandate from any working group or position. No, no, no. it's it's very much where my interests lie. Um, so I'm I'm thinking the um, uh, you know most people have heard of nginx or have a vague understanding probably what nginx does. Um, but there's this other thing uh, which is fairly new, centrifuge, which I think is really interesting. So um, centrifuge, like <laughs> I briefly collaborated with this person on like some JavaScript stuff years ago which I'm really happy that they're like working on really cool things. Um, but the, the, the main idea here is um, what if we had an outgoing queue for messages? Uh, how does this work? Where we can write messages into a queue and they shall be retried. Uh, job DB console, blah, 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 blah. Let's go all the way to the bottom. Scrolling still, scrolling still, scrolling still. So they, they had a problem that every now and then like a, a service they talked to would go down and then they had to uh, retry stuff on there. Uh, let's go into the engineering blog here. Comparing billions of rows a day. Goodbye microservices. There should be a cool graph here. Retry events, retry events, yada, 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 yada. I believe it's the one with the circle. Here we go. So if you, you have your API, you have your router, and they have centrifuge, and it can like um, send stuff off to all these backends. And it has a way of like retrying things and it keeps the internal queue and persists it. And, you know, it'll, it'll just wait for these things to go back online. Um, and it, it, it isolates this whole component. Um, like ev everything which says um, talk from your service to an external facing service can be isolated in, into this one thing. Uh, at the deployment level, there's Kubernetes, which has like a layer for that or whatever, which I don't quite understand and people have said it's a bit tricky to work with. But con conceptually, like the, this idea, I think makes a lot of sense. Um, example, like say we have our service and we have an external email provider and we uh, ping their API saying, please send, 
uh, please send this email uh, from our email address to this person. Here's the body text, here's the title, right? Four fields. Um, and then they'll be like, okay, cool. And then they send it off. But if they go down, uh, what you don't want to do is you don't want to bring your own system down. You just want them to be like, okay, cool. Um, I guess they're down. Here's our retry queue. We'll just gently wait until they're back up and then we'll like start flushing the emails back out again. And eventually our thing's flushed and it's good again. Um, and you want, you want it to be like isolated and abstracted away and like have a common abstraction for that. Um, also when you're developing locally, you probably don't want to keep on sending off emails all the time. So instead what you should probably do, what you would want to do, I think is be like, okay, cool. Here's development mode, uh, which means use this stub right here and um like don't don't send stuff off easy easy peasy swap it out use a separate uh, uh thing um <laughs> yeah <laughs> hope that makes sense um because not not just um sorry i was just like thinking for a second but um like I, I think email providers are a very common one. Analytics are another very common one. Um, what else is there? Sometimes like login stuff, although I don't know if you would want to wait with that. Um, it was more like instantaneous, but you know, uh, NPM had a problem, which might be along these lines. Uh, I, I, although I feel like this is mostly like sending it off and you don't care about the reply. Like you, a uh, request comes in, you say, yes, I've got it. And then you make sure it like persists to a backend, a separate uh, feedback loop. You don't wait for this to complete, right? Um, before you say, cool, got it. Like you you internally persist it. Like once it hits centrifuge, you would say, okay, cool. Now, now things are fine. Um, so I'm, I, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm feeling like like this model, There there's something to it. There's something to talking to uh, external providers and, and being able to wait for them. Um, as an abstraction. Um, I said there's another one, uh, quickly saw it here, but they're using uh, Kafka, looks like. And I think Kafka is a really good abstraction. Uh, you could probably like replace your in, uh, local database in favor of this Kafka thing. So the, the idea of Kafka is what if instead of um, having like a single database, we would just create a stream of events. For example, if you click a calendar, it would say uh, calendar for user ID uh, 17 increment by one. And the way that's interpreted completely depends. So you would run a, a reduce function on all that data. And then you would be like, okay, cool. Now here's the output. Like this is a snapshot of the state. Um, the main thing for that is that you can remove caches entirely because instead of like having cache for your data, you just have another uh, instance and our key value store uh, materialized view that consumes the, uh, those events and converts them into, into like snapshots so you can query them. Um, so I, I think Kafka has a very good model there. Um, currently working on Hypercore, which will probably allow for something similar uh, if you convert it right. Um, I don't know. I, I feel there's something to be said there for like a library version of that. So you don't need to deploy Zookeeper, but instead you like have it integrate it. Um, yeah, yeah, that's about it. I, I think those are our main parts. But like my, my, my idea is um, hopefully that we can like build a bunch of stuff um, that can integrate it into all this stuff. <laughs> I, ju I just want to make it e really easy to deploy this without like needing a giant deployment department and like all these microservices um kind of where i'm coming from all right that was a big old rant um all right fine fine let's do some some of these methods i need some water it's like bloody hot in here All right. <laughs> okay. So um, we have an issue here, which says use there's from access storage from pager. 
upgrade. Okay. Oh, this was never reviewed. Okay, that's fine. Um, what write, unwrap. Fine, this passing, so we just merge it. Merge, squash, merge, close. All right, so apparently one of our PRs failed. Uh, probably means we just need to rerun it, and that's all. This build has been terminated. Uh, yep, let's restart it. That's no, that's no good. That's pretty boo boo. Uh, issues, issues. Here's the issue. Issue. Flush FS axis on drop. Atomic FS axis. Uh, don't need either. Random access storage. Issues. Add lin method. C API, there we go, July 6th. In order to make a null allocation version of this API, we need one new API, read to vec, which takes a range, and vec to fill, uh, return to result. All right. Um, yeah. How long have we been going? I feel like an hour and 16 minutes. I think that's plenty. Um, I'm getting a little bit tired, which means things will become less interesting which means I should probably call it a day. So um, I'm gonna quietly implement these things, just on a couch. <laughs> maybe I'll go for a swim, probably not, but maybe uh, to cool down a little bit. But um, yeah, thanks everyone for tuning in. Um, I don't know when I'll be streaming again, but hopefully soon. <laughs> All right, um, is there anything else? No, there's nothing else. Um, thanks everyone. Yeah, you have a good day too, Dan. <laughs> thanks again. All right. Bye-bye.